The new Nike Pegasus Trail 4 has just been released and it looks and feels like it's had a really big update. Now, if you've followed the channel for some time, you'll know that I've got a kind of love-hate relationship with the Nike brand. And well, I suppose hate is a strong word and it's more like disappointment. I'm a big fan of a lot of their road running shoes, but I personally think that their trail running department definitely needs a bit of work. So let's dive into the video and find out if the new Pegasus Trail 4 is gonna be the shoe that changes all of that. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. We have another first impressions video for you today and I told you they're gonna be coming thick and fast this month. So the plan today is to run you through a few of the specs and features of the new Pegasus. We're also gonna highlight a couple of the big changes that Nike have made and then we're gonna be heading off to one of my favorite stomping grounds to Hiddy Woods and we're gonna be giving them a thorough testing. So they now retail in the UK for 114 pounds and 95p which I think is actually pretty reasonable when you compare it to its competitors. Weight wise weighing in at 285 grams in a men's UK 9.5 it is now running off a 9mm heel offset with a 36mm stack height. The Nike Pegasus Trail 4 is kind of pitched at that door to trail market so it's been designed to handle a big mix of terrain. Like I've already mentioned in the video uh, it is pretty much a brand new shoe from the ground up so this time around we got this nice lightweight construction uh, and it's kind of like a twin mesh design we've got all these added perforations around the midfoot around the toe box and even in that gusseted tongue so that should really improve sort of airflow keeping your feet nice and cool even when you're running in hot summer conditions we now get the addition of Nike's flywire technology and I was a big fan of this when we recently tested the Pegasus 39 road shoe so really happy to see it crossing over into the trail version as well should really help when it comes to fit and midfoot lockdown the gusseted tongue does have a slight bit of padding in it but it's still pretty thin in design we've got good padding around the ankle collar and then a nice bit of substance in the back of the shoe with a nice sturdy heel cup a handy pull tab on the heel just to make it a bit easier to get in and out of the shoe and then we've got some well-placed sort of structural overlays working from the heel around those laces just for a bit of extra durability and substance. The Pegasus Trail still runs off a full Nike React midsole but there has been some big changes made here and I personally think they are changes for the better. So the previous two versions of this shoe did have quite a deep stack height of very soft React cushioning and I think it made the shoes feel very unstable when you were running on uneven ground. So it looks like this time Nike have put less cushioning under our foot but they've also sunk us down into that midsole so we should feel a lot closer and more connected to the ground. We've now got this sort of full guide rail wrapping around our foot so like I said should feel a lot more connected but also give us a much more stable platform to run off. And lastly, but definitely not least, we have to talk about the part of the shoe where Nike always seem to struggle and it is the outsole. So this time round, we've got pretty much a full blown rubber outsole, apart from the odd sort of flex groove here and there. Lots of different things going on with the lug pattern. Couldn't really find a lot of information about lug depth. I've measured it. It looks like it's sort of around three or four mil. So the Pegasus Trail is still kind of set up for summer dry conditions and I think this outsole would still really struggle on the sort of muddy trails here uh, in the UK at winter time. Um, I really hope that they have improved the level of traction on wet rocky trails from the rubber compound because the last few pairs of Nike trail shoes that we tested haven't been great and if I'm honest they've been pretty dangerous in those conditions. When they arrived I quickly popped them on just to check the size in and it actually feels very comfortable and fits my foot shape very well and it's kind of like Nike have done a full circle because it feels very similar to the Pegasus 36 trail which definitely isn't a bad thing because that was a very popular Nike shoe. I still get lots of comments from you guys saying that that's the best trail shoe that Nike have ever produced. So uh, that's enough of me waffling on. I've literally got everything crossed about the performance of these out on the trail. So let's go and get changed and we'll see you guys in the woods.
We have made it to the glorious Tahiti Woods. What an incredible place to come and run, especially when the weather is like this. Do a lot of my run training and I ride the mountain bike down here. If you're ever in Cornwall, you're from Cornwall and you haven't run into Hiddy Woods, you have to come and check it out. It's got about nine miles of amazing trails, lots of different mixes of terrain, so something for everybody, so definitely worth checking out. We are about a mile into the run and we've just run a really nice section of woodland there, lots of routes to deal with, stunning, stunning section of trail. And the shoe is actually feeling quite nice underfoot. Uh, it's fitting well, it's true to size, but I have noticed uh, it is quite shallow in the toe box. There's not a lot of depth or volume in the toe box of the upper. As you can imagine, the trails are pretty dry and firm at the moment. We're having some incredible weather down here in Cornwall. And that uh, full react midsole is feeling very bouncy underfoot and pretty responsive. And I actually think it's feeling quite a bit more responsive than the previous version of the shoe. But the plan today is to get a good sort of seven miles in, in the new Pegasus Trail 4. We're gonna be running on a big mix of terrain. So dry trail, rooted trail, we've got some tarmac, we've got some loose gravelly stuff to deal with. So it should be a good test for the shoe, but yeah, come along on the run and enjoy the views. <laughs> We are super busy at the channel at the moment, testing out lots of kit, lots of shoes to run in, trying to catch up after being ill and not being able to run. And just the other day, I went out and took the uh, new Ride 15s from Socony out for their first run. I've got to be honest, my legs were feeling pretty sore as I ran the last 15 miles of the Southwest Traverse a couple of days before that. And my quads were like concrete. But I went out on the bike yesterday, with the boys and I think that's really helped shake the all them toxins out and free the legs up so they are feeling way better today which is great because I think it will allow us to up the pace a bit today and give the new Pegasus Trail a really good test but if you haven't seen that first impressions in the new Sockney ride I definitely recommend checking it out because that is some shoe we are just making our way to a super technical ridge line that I love running into Hiddy Woods. Such a cool section of trail. It's off camber, loads of routes, you have to be really focused, but it's also a great test for a new trail shoe. The last two shoes that I ran on the ridge line were Salomon's S-Lab Cross 2 and Innovate's X Talon Ultra. And both of those shoes passed with flying colors. So. I think this section of trail is going to be a super challenging test for the new Pegasus trail. Uh, it is super technical, I need to be really focused, so we're going to put the camera away and I'll see you guys on the other side, but wish me luck. expected. I wouldn't say the Pegasus felt as connected as the Salomon shoe or the Innovate shoe, but it definitely felt a lot better than any other Nike trail running shoes that I've run in. I think having a little bit less cushioning, but also being sunk down into that midsole has really helped. And then you've got that guide rail wrapping around your foot. So I definitely felt a, a bit more connected and a bit more planted compared to all the other Nike trail shoes that I've run in. Um, so far, so good. So we've uh, run on lots of dry trail, loose trail, rocky trail, but I really want to find some mud to test out that outsole. So we're going to head down by the river. Hopefully we can find some. Excuse me for being out of breath. I just run up a big old hill back there. Uh, as far as the upper goes, 
pretty comfortable straight out the box. So no hot spots, no rubbing, no irritation, no nothing. Uh, I was a little bit worried about the thin tongue. Shouldn't have been. Definitely enough padding in there. Really good stretch in the back end of the shoe. So I feel nice and locked down in the heel. And with the combination of that gusseted tongue and the new fly wire, I feel really well held around the midfoot. The only thing I would say is, when it comes down to volume in the toe box, like I mentioned, I haven't got a wide foot or a big foot or a deep foot. And that toe box room, it is quite shallow and it's not the widest shoe in the world. So if you do have wide feet, it could cause you problems. Unfortunately, we still haven't found any mud to test the outsole out. So I'm headed along the top trail here to a, a trail that we ride on the mountain bikes that normally sits really muddy and wet because it's sheltered by all the trees. So hopefully we'll get some there. Oh well, no luck unfortunately. This is usually the muddy bit. It usually sits really boggy in here and uh, it is absolutely rock solid. So it looks like we're not gonna get any mud on today's run, but we'll definitely make sure we run the shoe through some mud before we give you our full in-depth review. are pretty much done so just under seven miles the van is just around the corner and for a first run in a nike trail running shoe i've actually really really enjoyed it and it's handled everything pretty well so the uh, rooty sections the gravelly section the compact sections of trail and in true nike trail style it's been brilliant on the sections of tarmac obviously the ultimate test is going to come when we run it in the wet on wet rock and in mud but uh, the best thing we can do is get back to the flat and we'll break down the performance in a bit more detail. It was awesome being back running into Hiddy Woods and I don't know what it is but it really does remind me of being a kid when I run in the woods and I think it's all those memories of sort of heading off at the weekend with my mates to have an adventure in the woods especially when the sun is out and it's shining through the trees there's something very magical about it. I'm also happy to say it was probably the best first run I've had in a Nike trail running shoe for some time, and maybe even ever. I really enjoyed how that new midsole performed. It felt very comfortable, very cushioned, but responsive. And even on the sort of technical rooty areas that I ran, I still felt nice and stable and connected underfoot. And that definitely wasn't the case when I ran in the Pegasus Trail 2 and the Terra Kyger 7. I really did have issues with stability in both of those shoes. It was a pretty comfortable first experience in the upper. It seemed to fit my foot shape really well. Good depth uh, around the ankle collar and in the heel, so uh, felt really secure in the back end of the shoe. Just the right amount of padding as well, so not too bulky, but just enough padding to make it feel nice and plush. The same can be said for that gusseted tongue and the Nike Flywire technology combination. I felt really well hugged and well held in that upper, and I think that had a big part to play with the shoe feeling a lot more stable on uneven ground. You know, if you are slipping and sliding around inside the shoe, you're never gonna feel that confident about running on technical trails. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, the only real negative I have when it comes to the fit or the upper is that the toe box is quite shallow. Now, this isn't negative for me because I haven't got a deep, wide foot, but you can see there's not a lot of sort of depth to that toe box. So if you do have quite a lot of volume to your foot and you are running distance and your feet expand, then that might cause you a few issues. The only other thing is there's no toe bumper on the shoe. So the toe is very, very soft. So if you were unlucky enough to kick a rock or hit something sticking out of the ground, then your toe is gonna take the full brunt of the force because of the lack of protection. And wrapping up, let's discuss outsole and the levels of grip and traction I got on today's run. And it actually surprised me, it actually performed really well. And yes, it was dry out there, but there was still some tricky situations. I ran down quite a lot of sort of technical steep, dry, dusty, loose descents and it coped with it really well and I felt pretty confident underfoot. But 
And it is a big but, I spent the whole seven miles of the run trying to find some wetter, muddier conditions and I just couldn't find any. It was so dry out there. And anyone that's run in a Nike trail running shoe will know that it's in those wet conditions where they can really struggle. So uh, over the coming weeks, we're gonna get some more miles in the shoe and I'm definitely gonna try and seek out some wetter, muddier conditions so that we can test this outsole thoroughly before our full in-depth review. So all in all, a pretty good first outing in Nike's new trail offering. And I actually think it's gonna make a pretty good sort of summer trail crossover shoe. A nice comfortable upper, a well-connected cushioned midsole and an enjoyable shoe to run in. Like I just said, we're gonna be continuing to run in the new Pegasus Trail 4, and then we'll be back at the channel with a full in-depth review once we got some good mileage in the shoe. Another first impressions video ticked off the list, and I actually feel like I'm starting to catch up now at the channel. Next up is gonna be Salomon's first attempt at a deeply cushioned road running shoe with our first impressions of their Glide Max. We've also got some running sunglasses content heading your way. Um, but if you have enjoyed the video, you know what to do guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help the channel out and it's very much appreciated. Uh, let me just take these off because I realize I do look a little bit silly wearing sunglasses inside, but Sun God sunglasses, pretty cool. A review coming to them soon. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel further, then you can do through our merch store. We've got some wicked merch available, or you can also support us through our Patreon page for as little as two pound a month. Not only does it really help the channel out, but it opens up a world of run for adventure perks from uh, a merch discount code, also exclusive content and much, much more. So I'll leave links for our merch store and the Patreon page in the description below. But for now guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. We will see you back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. I don't know what it is, but there's something that really reminds me of being a kid when I'm running in the woods. And I think it's that sort of memories of... Uh, there wasn't a lot of information when it comes to the lugs. I've tried measuring them. I think they're around four, uh, three or four... <coughs>